Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today, I want to talk about partial classes, about code size, uh, comments a little bit more. I've talked about it before, but I want to hit it again. And um, some of the string invoking methods in Unity. Um, and this is coming to, I, I've run into a couple issues this week from some of these things, and I figured I should share and just kind of get it out there for newer developers to kind of know what to watch out for. So if you've never used partial classes before, you can find a little info about them on the Microsoft site. Um, here, you see that they'll mention that there are several situations when splitting a class definition is desirable. And then they list two of them. Those are the only two. And I would say that the first one is invalid, which just says that when working on large projects spread across, uh, a class spread across multiple files makes it easy for multiple people to work on it at the same time. And while that's true, uh, there are better ways to, to handle that. So having a big giant class and having multiple people work on it can be a pain for merging, um, no, essentially for merging or checking out and editing at the same time. But um, having a big giant class that's just split off into multiple files while it's a tiny bit better than a big file, it's not good. The ideal would be to have multiple classes and have those split, spread out across multiple files. The problem with one big one that's spread on multiple files is that you end up with a, a giant violation of the single responsibility principle. If your class is so big that it needs to be in more than one file, it's definitely doing way more than one thing. In fact, it's probably doing a big chunk of what your game does. And in that case, you're not really using objects in a clean way. You're not using classes in a clean way. And you've got a big monolith that's going to be buggy, hard to maintain, and um, just kind of a pain to work with. So ideally, you want to go for single responsibility, small classes that um, that do one thing. And they're, they're tiny. You know, Keep your classes a couple hundred lines at most. Definitely don't split them into multiple and don't use partial classes to hide the fact that your class is enormous. Now, there is a valid reason here, which is just when using uh, auto-generated code. So if you do Windows, WinForms work, WPF stuff, um, I think Entity Framework even did it. It would create auto-generated classes with the partial modifier there for that auto-generated code. And there it made sense because you wanted to have custom code that was working with those classes and you wanted to have um, the auto-generated stuff, and when you regenerated, you didn't want to overwrite the custom code. That's essentially what these were created for, and now they just get kind of misused as a way to, again, hide the fact that you're really violating single responsibility principle. So I'd avoid using them, and I've set up a quick little sample just kind of show how much of a pain it can be. So I've got a player here, right? And um, actually, here let's start with the player input. So I'm looking at my player class. I'm trying to figure out, hey, this guy's moving. First thing you notice is that this class just has input stuff. You might think like, okay, it's clean. It's just doing one thing, but it's not. It's just the file that's doing one thing. In reality, we hit, you know, shift F12 and find, okay, the actual work of this class or the part that's calling this is in another file over here called player. This is the player.cs and the player input. And you even notice that like this move speed, well, it's, it's used over here, but it's declared in another file. It's a little bit harder to find. And again, it's not split up the way that it should be. Really, this should be a separate player input script that's either probably not even a mono behavior and just manages some updating based off of you know input. Now, let's look at it a little bit more. And let's look at like our player pathing script. Here you go, okay, we've got a script that's gonna do some pathing, and obviously in a real project this is gonna do more than just debug log, do some actual pathing or some kind of other work. And then I hit Shift F12, and look, and oh yeah, wait, it's gray, it's not referenced anywhere, what's going on here? So if I, again, Shift F12, you see no references, but if I hit play, let's, let's do that, let's jump in and hit play. And then I'm going to go to the console, and look, you can see, it's calculating the path. Something's calling it. That's weird, right? It doesn't have a reference to it. What the hell is calling it? Now, this is slightly separate from partial classes, but kind of all comes from the same systemic issue. Let's open up this obscure thing that you forgot, or I forgot. And that's, oh, look here. 
we're calling invoke repeating and passing in the name of the method. So our reference to this method is no longer in code. We have to know that it exists or do a string search for this. And for this, maybe for do pathing, it's pretty easy. But a lot of times these methods are named a little bit more generic and you could end up with you know, hundreds of results and it's really hard to find things. Not being able to track back and find the reference is a giant pain. Now, I wanted to show that because in the newer versions of Unity, if you switch to the .NET 4.6 profile, you can actually use the name of operator. And what this does is at compile time, it's gonna take the do pathing method and it's gonna essentially replace it with that string. But it gives us a couple things. First off, you see that we have a reference here. So if I hit Shift F12 to find references, I can see where it's coming from. The other thing is if I rename this, so I name this like do pathing now. And let's just hit next. And now if I save and go back over to here, you should see that this actually updated automatically. Now, had I not done that and not had ReSharper on that renamed the commented version, uh, this would have been bugged and we would have had it still be do pathing with this renamed as do pathing now and things would have broken and we wouldn't have known why without digging through the code or having memorized our code base and exactly what everything is doing. So if you're going to use these string based methods, ideally, you know, switch to 4.6 and use the name of operator. It's a, it's a big saver there. It, again, fixes your references and makes the code a little bit cleaner. Um, the other option is to put a comment. Right, so if we're gonna have uh, something that's invoked repeating and it's using this method, here, let's fix that. Um, just, this is one of those situations where dropping a comment makes sense. So called from invoke repeating. This, this is the kind of comment that I would like. So if you've seen my other videos about comments, usually say like, avoid them, they're a big sign of bad code, um, there are a couple edge cases where they make sense. This is one of those edge cases. So I guess before we wrap this up, I think what I would like to do is just a quick refactor of this to show how you would separate this out and split it without using partial classes. So the first thing I do is just go to player, delete that partial, and then I'm gonna go to player input and rename this to be player input. So the file name actually matches the class. Oops, there we go. Um, and then this one doesn't have a mono. Um, I think I'll want to make it a mono behavior. No, probably not. I think I'll leave that as not a mono behavior. Um, and I'll go into here and we'll make a reference to a player input. So do player input. I call this player input. And then we'll create an awake method. And in here, we'll initialize a player input. So just do a player input equals new player input. And I want to pass in my transform. And I think I'll, yeah, let's just pass in the transform. I'm going to move this move speed off of here. We'll put that onto player input. And I'm going to make it not a serialized field. For now, I'm just going to hard code that speed. I can move this speed off into a totally separate object that has the player's settings instead. Um, oh, and then on player input, we need to generate a constructor. So let's do CTOR tab, it'll generate it. And here we want a transform parameter. So we'll just pass that in. And then we'll say player transform equals transform. Actually, let's rename that to player transform add a this dot at the beginning, generate the field. There we go. And then we'll move the player transform like that. Now I can delete these unused using statements, jump back over to my player. And then um, for our player input, we need to call this handle input method. So we'll just make this public. And then in our players update, we'll just call player input dot handle input. And we're just about done. Um, the player pathing, I'm just gonna split this into a class, player pathing. Uh, we're not gonna hook that up right now. And uh, we'll player, uh, uh, what do we call this? Let's just delete that. 
shouldn't have that in there anyway. There we go. Killed it. So now we have a player that is only responsible for keeping track of its components. Right now it has a single component. We could have multiple components on here that it's keeping track of and organizing, but those components, you know, the individual classes, same components, but they're not Unity components necessarily. They could be, but in this case it doesn't need to be, so it isn't. Um, but it's handling all of the components in there and telling them to do what they need to do and handling their work on their own so that they don't have to um, all be part of one big giant monolithic class. Nice benefit here is if I want to swap out this player input, I could add an interface and just quickly swap them in and out, have a different player input. We can also test our player input in isolation. We can reuse this player input class on something else. Maybe want them to take control of something that's not a player. Doesn't matter because here we just need a transform that we want to move around and it'll work. Right? We don't have this big monolithic kind of pain in the ass class. So I guess the, the key takeaways here are just split, split your stuff off a lot. Splitting into multiple files that are the same class is not splitting your code. It's just hiding the fact that your code is not split. And um, you know, comment things that aren't normal and aren't obvious. So if you have something you know, that's called from an invoke repeating or called by string name and it looks like it's never used and the tools are gonna tell you, hey, this method's never used, you know, like ReSharper wants to clean that thing up and delete it because it doesn't look like it's used. So use name of if you can, or at least put a comment there so that people know how to get to it, how it's there, and so you remember in the future. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I know it's a little bit long and ranty, but just some stuff that was on my mind. So if you liked the video, don't forget to share it with friends, like, and hit subscribe, and thanks for watching.